worships for everyone and it involves everything, everything in us. And I pray that tonight you wouldn't just watch an incredible night unfold before you, but just see it happen and not participate. But I'm believing that every one of us would lean in, press in towards God and embrace all that he has. And the amazing promise of the Bible is that as we lean into God, as we draw near to God, is that he draws near to us. And that he comes to change us and reveal himself to us and speak to us. Amen. Well, come on, like from the front to the back, all around this incredible auditorium, let's lift our hands towards God tonight. And we're going to commit this into his hands. And God, we look to you tonight. Above the singing, God, above the music about the songs. Let your name be lifted high, Jesus. Let your name be honored, God. And we commit all that we are to you, God, and everything that we do. And we reach towards you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. I surrender. Come on, how many of you can say, I, can, I surrender today? I surrender. I surrender. I want to know you more. Know you more. I surrender. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. Mm, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. How many of us want to know him more? Mm, there's so much more to God that we can know. surrender lift up your hands and say I surrender if you can't lift your hands up use your mouth hallelujah if you can't speak say it in your mind hallelujah I surrender surrender It's a personal thing between you and God. Not your neighbor, not your friend, not your family, but you. God is calling for you and asking for you to surrender to him, to surrender it all. Everything, surrender it. Surrender. Tap into the worship wherever you are. Tap in, tap in. Come on, come on. Come on. When Jesus breathe within, Lord have your way, Lord have your way in me. Because he has a purpose for you. Hallelujah. 
Destiny, destiny is calling you. Destiny is calling. Hallelujah. Let the Lord have his way. Hallelujah. He wants to have his way. Come on. He's not like man. You know, when they say man going to have his way with us, amen, that can be abuse. That could be anything negative. But when God has his way in you, come on, he's doing a work. He wants to do a work in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He wants to do something in you so that he can use you for his purpose and for his glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We all have testimonies. Everybody has a testimony of what God has done for them. Come on now. Hallelujah. If God can use a little child, come on. If you can use a donkey to talk, he can use you. Hallelujah. So don't count yourself out. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. This is Noella Perry, amen, coming from Divine Purpose Outreach Ministries, amen. Today, we're not having church in the building, amen, but we are still on social media. We thank God for, my God, what a mighty God we serve. Thank God for another avenue that we can come in, amen, and we can still fellowship with each other, amen. We may not be able to see each other, amen, but my God, I can see the comments, amen, so praise God for all of you. Hallelujah, that's tuning in, amen. My Facebook family, my Divine Purpose Outreach Ministries family, hello, good morning, good day, amen. God bless each and every one of you. Wow, it's Sunday, August 15th, 2021. Tell me the year is not going fast. Wow, hallelujah, praise God. We honor God today, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I want to honor my the founder of Divine Purpose Outreach Ministries, Bernard Johnson. Amen. I want to acknowledge all my DPOM family, everyone tuning in on social media, those that will come back and watch. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. Hallelujah. Today, the scripture is coming from Ezekiel chapter 37. Amen. Wherever you are, get your Bibles, get your phone, your pads. Amen. Whatever you're using. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1 through 10. Amen. And I just want to remind you that today is the day of salvation. Don't wait till tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised to us. Amen. The next breath we take is not promised to us. Amen. God is faithful. God has been faithful to, to so many of us. Amen. Hallelujah. We're still alive. We're still in a number. Amen. And the Lord is long suffering. Amen. He don't want any to perish, but he want all to come to repentance. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. I have one of my grandmother back in New York. Amen. She's in her nineties. Amen. And my God, sometimes she still be talking to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So no matter what age you are, you can still have that relationship. You can still communicate with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Your age ain't none but a number. Amen. Hallelujah. So I just want to remind you to seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Hallelujah. Our life is like a vapor is here and it vanishes away. Life is so short. You know, we used, I used to hear that growing up a lot. And you know, now, now that I'm older, I'm 52 now and I'm like, wow, you know, now I see now why, you know, when they say life is so short, now I'm seeing it more and more because so many people are just leaving this earth. Jesus. Seek God, seek the Lord, seek a relationship. Christianity is not a religion, it's a relationship. When you confess Jesus Christ, when you do Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart, God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. It's not you might be or you maybe, but you shall be saved. For with the heart, Man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Come on, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is the gospel. Christ died, was buried, and rose again on the third day. Hallelujah. God rose. He rose for, for you and for me. He went and he died on the cross for us individually. He thought about me and he thought about you. Come on. He knew we was going to be born in this earth. And he was thinking about, he had us on his mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he, when he died for us, because he know when we were born into this world, we were born in sin. We were born separated from God. 
But God loved us so much. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave. His only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Come on, he didn't put no name in it. He said whosoever. That means you, me, anybody, your family, your children, your grandchildren. Come on, whosoever. Believe in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. So please, please, I beg you, I beseech you, my brethren, my sisters, please seek God. If you don't know him, you don't have to stop doing what you're doing. I remember when I was, that's not in the word, but I'm going where the Holy Ghost is leading me. I remember when I was growing up and even when I was started, you know, just got saved. You know, they would say, well, you got to stop sinning. You got to stop fornicating. You got to stop lying. You got to stop stealing before God can accept you. No, 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 no. You accept Christ first as Lord and Savior and God will do the work in you. Some people will say, well, I, I, I can't go to church right now. I don't have the right outfit. Come on. If you got some shorts, you got some jeans. And I know sometimes we go to different places and people will look at you funny. But you know what? You don't let nobody keep you out of the building. And we know that we are the church. Amen. The building is a place that we go into fellowship with each other and to use the gifts God has given us. But you don't let nobody keep you out of the church building because of what you're wearing. You're coming to God. You're coming because you want more of God. It's your relationship with God. You know what? You know, you got, just got to pray for some people and tell them, Lord, deal with them. Because a lot of us, we keep people out of the church because of how we treat people. You can remember when Jesus was on the earth, Jesus hang with the tax collectors and the sinners. He hang with the drunkards. Come on, he hang with the prostitutes. Come on, this is the people he hung with. He drank with them. He sat in amongst them. A lot of us, we, you know, we're terrible as Christians, as, as bo the body of Christ, because we don't want to fellowship with people. We don't want to talk, even, you know, we, we shun the homosexuals and the lesbians. We just like, we see them and we like, you don't do that. If it's not for the grace of God, there go you. You can be in anything. We, you know, we, you know, we know about people that get caught in sin and we like, we shunning them and we putting their business on Facebook. That's not of God. That's not of God. How can we reach people if we don't show them love? We got No, we don't condone sin, but we got to show them the love of God. That's what draws them in. Come on. The goodness of God leads to repentance. We got to show people the love of God because nobody is perfect. Every one of us got some skeletons in our closet. Every one of us got some things that we did we wish we didn't do, and we don't want nobody to find out. But I'm here to tell you, Seek the Lord. Don't let nobody hinder you from coming to church. Don't let nobody hinder you from, from pressing towards God. Because we're living in some serious time and we really have, need to have a relationship with our Father. Because that's what's going to bring us through. You can't, we can't tr trust the CDC. We can't trust the government because they say one thing, then they're doing another. They say if you get fully vaccinated, you don't need to wear a mask. No, they say you need to wear a mask. So they're just going back and forth, back and forth. And that's why we need to really have a relationship with God. Because, you know, our Lord he, and our Savior, he will direct us. He will, give, he will give us instruction. Because he knows what's best for our lives individually. Amen. Amen. So I just, you know, that was just the Holy Spirit. But Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1 through 10. And it reads... The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. And he, which is the Lord said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, oh, Lord God, you know, basically saying, God, you the only one know. I don't know. Again, verse four, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, oh, you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. 
and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them. And the skin covered them above. But there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus says the Lord God. Come from the four winds, O breath. And breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesy as he commanded me. And the breath came into them and they lived. And stood up upon their feet. An exceeding great army. So end the reading of the word. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen. And for a title... You shall decree a thing, and it will be established. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Thank you for another opportunity, Lord God, to bring your word, Father. Holy Spirit, continue to move as you already have been moving. Touch the hearts of your people. Touch the spirits of your people. Lord, so many people are walking around like the walking dead. In the natural, they're walking around with life. But in the spirit, man, they're dead on the inside. Send forth your word of encouragement to bring life to your people, Father. All the areas where your people are dead, God. Where it seems that like there is no hope. I speak life. In the name of Jesus, I speak life to, 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 to sick bodies. I speak life, oh God. Even to those who have died, God. The doctors have given them a bad report. I speak life, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that you shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. Because, Father, we, re we believe the report of the Lord. You say you send your word and you heal them, Father. You say healing is a children's bread. You say whatever we ask for in prayer, believe and we receive that we would have it. In the name of Jesus, we know, God, that you don't desire nobody to be sick, God. You don't desire people to die prematurely, Father. But it's because of the life that we're living, because we're in this world, Father. And things are happening, oh God. Death is coming, oh God. The coronavirus, oh God, is ramping in the land. The variant, oh God. People are sick, oh God. But we decree healing in the name of Jesus. We decree healing. Whoever is sick on this line and whoever will come back and listen to this word that is sick, I decree and I declare healing in the name of Jesus. Healing to lungs, God. Healing to hearts, God. Healing to minds, Father. Healing to your people's spirit, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Healing to the bodies of your people, Father. We decree and declare that your people will come alive, oh God, to the things of God. To alive to the purpose that you have for them, oh Father. So many people are walking around trying to find out what is my purpose. I speak life to their purpose in the name of Jesus. That they will come forth and they will do the work of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Have your way, God. Speak life to every deaf ears. Life to every to the eyes of your people. The eyes of the understanding of your people will be open. In the name of Jesus. Life to the minds of your people. Speak life. You told us that we can decree a thing and it will be established. You said death and life and the power of the tongue and they that love it will eat its fruit. So we're speaking life today. We're not speaking death. My God, no matter what the doctors may have said to us, no matter what things are going on in this world, we see all this craziness. We're speaking life in the name of Jesus. So have your way, Holy Spirit. Move, oh God. Touch the touch your people, God. Touch them today wherever they are, Father. You say you send your word and you heal them, Father, and deliver them from all the destruction. So we send this word today, Father. And we speak life. Have your way, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'll give you a little background on the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel prophesied that the exiles from both Judah and Israel would return to Palestine. 
leaving none in the diaspora. And the eminent new age, a new covenant will be made with the restored house of Israel, to whom God will give a new spirit and a new heart. Now, Ezekiel is a prophet. I'm going to give you a little background on him. Ezekiel's name means God's strength or strengthened by God. He grew up in Jerusalem, served as a priest in the temple, and was among, among the second group of captives taken to Babylon along with King Jehoiakim. While in Babylon, he became a prophet of God. He is the author of the Old Testament book, which is Ezekiel, that bears his name. My first point today is the prophet's vision. The dictionary defined define vision as the faculty or state of being able to see. The ability to think about or plan the future with imagination or wisdom. Amen. A vision is something seen in a dream, a trance, especially a supernatural appearance that usually conveys a revelation. Now, in, in, in these first few verses, the Lord takes Ezekiel in the spirit and set him down in the midst of a valley. Now, the definition of a valley is an elongated low area often running between hills or mountains, which will typically contain a river or stream running from one end to the other. Most valleys are formed by erosion of the land surface by rivers or streams over a very long period of time. So he sees God takes him in the spirit. And many of us, God has taken us in the spirit. And sometimes you don't know that you're in the spirit realm because sometimes God will open up your spiritual eyes and show you things. Let me give you an example. This is how you can see in the spirit realm. You know, sometimes you might be sitting there or you're doing something and something flash across your face. That's, that's the spirit realm right there. And see, sometimes when we see the things flash across our eyes, we will look. If you don't look, whatever it is, it will manifest. You will see that vision. And sometimes, I know, I know for me, because there were times when the Lord would be trying to show me something, a vision, and I see something, and I would jump, and I would turn my face off. And so sometimes, you know, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So sometimes we will see things, and we get, might get a little afraid. But when you keep looking, God is going to open up a vision and show you in the spirit realm. Because the spirit realm is, is, is as natural as the, 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 the natural realm that we're in right now. Just like how you can walk around and you can see people. You know, if you're in your house, you can see your table, you can see your kitchen, you can see your bathroom, you can see your bed. The spirit realm is just as, na as natural as that. And you know, so in order for us to see it, God has to open up our spiritual eyes and show us. But sometimes, you know, we get, we see things and we like, oh my God, I'm seeing things. You know, it's not you seeing things. It's God is showing something God wants to reveal to you. And sometimes when some of us, like I said, we get scared and we turn away. And if, if you don't turn away and you just stay focused while that thing, you see that thing flashing, it will manifest in front of you. And that would be like a, a vision too that God will show us things. And that's also like taking us into the spirit realm because he's showing us things. And in these days, you know, the last days, you know, we're in the end times and God really wants to open up our, our spiritual eyes and show us visions, show us things to come, show us things. Because sometimes things are happening right in front of you with your family and things. You don't always see it. You don't always know. But you know what? God wants to show us. The Bible tells us we will not be ignorant of the devil's devices. So sometimes God will open up your spiritual and show you things that the enemy is planning against your family, or against you or on your job or whatever. And because you have that inside knowledge of what's about to happen, then you're able to pray in the spirit. Then you're able to pray and you can cancel that. See, a lot of things that happen, accidents, you know, and, and, and tornadoes and different things, we can pray in the spirit. And when we pray, we can cancel that thing. It don't have to come to pass. We know that some things are going to come to pass. But a lot of things are happening prematurely a lot of people are dying prematurely but if we you know if when god shows us things you're able to pray and you can cancel some things and prevent some things from happening so that's a part so just giving you a little um information on the spirit realm and and, and visions 
So the Lord took Ezekiel because this is what was going to happen in the future. And the Lord showed Ezekiel what was going to happen. So he took him and he set him down in the midst of a valley, which was full of bones. And he caused, he said, and caused me to pass by them round about. Meaning that the Lord had Ezekiel walk around and look at the bones. So he was able to see the bones from every angle. And it was like, and behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. So these bones, what, it wasn't just bones. These things were dry, very dry. And the meaning of low is used to draw attention to an interesting or amazing event. So when Ezekiel saw this, he was like, whoa. This wasn't just regular bones. It, was, it wasn't just something. The bones wasn't just like bones. You know, something I remember back in my country in Trinidad was from, you know, we would... When it's time to eat, you know, we eat that chicken bone and we eat that chicken bone until that thing was just dry. We got the skin off. We, we go all the way down to the end of that bone until, and then it gets so dry, you know, and then sometimes you throw that bone away. And then eventually when you look at it in the trash, it's so dry. I'm talking about these bones were not just dry, but they were very dry. Listen to this. Dry means free from liquid or moisture. Having or characterized by little or no rain, a dry climate, marked by the absence of natural or normal moisture, a dry month, not on the water. Come on, dry land. So when he saw these bones, these things were really dry, like nothing on it. No flesh, no sinews, no moisture, nothing. And then, and he said unto me, which is God said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? So God is, an, an, excuse me, asking Ezekiel a question. Can these bones live? And in the, in the eyes of Ezekiel is like, he said, and I answered, oh Lord God, you know. So in the eyes of Ezekiel is like, ain't no hope for these bones. Look at these bones. They're not just dry, but they're very dry. It's going to take a miracle. It's going to take a miracle for something to happen to these bones. Now listen to the explanation of bones. The meaning, a bone is a rigid tissue that constitutes part of the skeleton in most vertebrate animals. Bones protect the various organs of the body. They produce red and white blood cells, store minerals, provide structure and support for the body, and enable mobility. Bones come in a variety of shapes and sizes and have a complex internal and external structure. They are lightweight, yet strong and hard, and serve multiple functions. So when Ezekiel saw these bones, they were very dry. But I want you to, to, to give you a little background because the bones eventually represents the nation of Israel. And as we go down, you're going to see. And so, verse 4. It says, again, he, the Lord said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, all you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now, does that make any sense though? prophesy talking to, dead, to dry bones that don't make no sense sometimes God asks us to do some things that don't make no sense but listen to this he told him to prophesy to prophesy means this to declare say that a specific thing will happen in the future to foretell to predict to forecast prophesy means to tell beforehand Foretell applies to the telling of the coming of a future event by any pro procedure, procedure or any source of information. Let me give you a little information on this. Prophets 
are not the only ones that can prophesy. There's the office of the prophet, according to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 16, because it says, and he gives some to be apostle, some to be prophet, some to be evangelist and pastor and teacher. But there's also the gift of prophecy, which you can find in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. There's a gift of prophecy. There's a word of knowledge. There's a word of wisdom. God has given all of us gifts. And some of you may not have the office of a prophet. You may not have the office of an apostle. You may not have the office of an evangelist or a pastor, teacher. But let me tell you something. If you're in the body of Christ, you can prophesy. Because prophesy is telling what God said. So don't count yourself out. God can use you to prophesy. God can use you to, before I even became a, a, you know, an pastor, the Lord was using me to prophesy. He was using me to, he was show me things in the spirit concerning people. He will give me a word for him. So don't count yourself out. You don't need to have an, a title for God to use you in the, in the area to prophesy. You can prophesy. That's a, it's in first Corinthians chapter 12. So for prophecies foretelling, it's predicting, it's telling what God says, because not just what God says in the Bible, but God will tell you some things in a still small voice. He will reveal things to you about maybe about people, about your family and something he may give you a word to go tell them and you got to do it. Because you know what? Sometimes it, may, it might be a life or death situation. You tell somebody what God said to tell them, that might save that person from death. It might save that person from suicide. It might save that person from going to hurt somebody. We don't know. But when God tells us to say something, we got to say it. And it, even though it may, sound, it may sound foolish, like, look at God tell him to speak to bones. Huh? I mean, I can imagine. You know, him, Ezekiel is outside in a valley, in a vision. And he's, he's walking around and God turned him to speak to these bones. Imagine if this happened in the natural. You know, people will look at him like he's crazy. What is, we need to go get the crazy, get the police, get, you know, get the doctors. This guy crazy. He walking around talking to dead bones, dry bones. Just like for instance, God tell you to go to the hospital. You got somebody sick laying up in the bed. Dying or just sick, and the Lord tell you, Go prophesy, go speak life. And you know, you come in the hospital or the nursing home, wherever, and, and you, 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 I speak life in the name of G. You shine at them, people's looking at you like, especially when the doctors, you know, doctors give them a bad report and say, Ah, oh, they ain't gonna live, they got 24 hours, they got seven days, they ain't got that much longer, and you walk in. With a word from God and with the anointing and the Holy Spirit on you. And you're going to speak to that person and say, you shall not die, but live. And declare the works of the... People are going to look at you crazy. The doctor's going to be like, what are you talking about? I'm looking at the x-ray. I'm looking at, at, at the report. Whose report are you going to believe? Yeah, we, we see what y'all saying, but guess what? We serve a higher power. We serve a God that's able to do the impossible. And so that's why when God give us a word, we got to do it. Like for instance, the Lord told me today, don't, don't, you know, don't open the church today. Don't go to the church building today. Give a word on social media. And I'm like, I'm looking out of the weather. I'm like, but it ain't, and I know it's supposed to have thunderstorm later on, but it ain't raining right now. I don't, I'm looking at the forecast, the weather forecast. I don't see no rain for 11, 12 o'clock. In my mind, I'm like, why is he telling me don't, don't go to the church building? I don't know. He didn't give me no reason. And sometimes when God tells us to do something, he don't always give you a reason. And that's when you got to trust him. That's when you got to obey. Because look at what happened. Ezekiel obeyed God and look at what the results was. So all of us have the ability to prophesy. To prophesy is to say what God said. But it must be done in decency and in order because God is a God, God of order. And when we're talking about that, we're talking about in the churches. If you're in a church and you don't run around and just be prophesying to everybody, there's an order in the house. If you have a word, you go tell the leaders, hey, you know what? God gave me a word. Or, you know, in your own time, I, you know, 
you know, after church or whatever, you, you know, you talk to the, you know, be led by the spirit of God, but there's an order in the house of God. You know, you got to follow some, you know, protocol, but he told, God told Ezekiel to prophesy. If he didn't prophesy, nothing would happen. The bones would stay dead and disconnected and dry. And he had to prophesy what God said, not what he wanted. See, that's how some of us get messed up. Because we want to use our own words. You know, the enemy ain't moving and doing and, and, and obeying your words. He obeyed God's word. That's why in Matthew chapter 4 and Luke chapter 4, when Jesus was in the wilderness tempted, the enemy came and tempted him. He used the word of God. <clears throat> Jesus used the word. Because remember, when Jesus was on the earth, there was no New Testament yet. The New Testament came after Jesus went back to heaven. That's when it was established. But it was always the Old Testament. And Jesus used the words from the Old Testament to put the devil in his place. When you get a chance, if you have never read Matthew 4 and Luke chapter 4 when Jesus was in the wilderness, you need to read it. It's from verse 1 to 11. The enemy came and tempted him. Remember, he was hungry. Jesus had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and he was hungry. He's tempted like us. Whatever you're tempted with, Jesus was tempted the same way, but he never sinned. And so that means we don't have to sin. We don't have to give in to the temptation. And I know this flesh is weak, but I'm telling you, if you're a Christian, the Holy Spirit is there to keep you. He can give you the strength to make it through, to resist any temptation that come your way. But Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And when he, the, the enemy, you know, the Holy Spirit led him into the willingness to be tempted. He had to go through temptation because he is able to keep us when we're tempted. The enemy came and said, if you be the son of God, turn these stones into bread. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus said it's written, Old Testament, man must not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. That's Deuteronomy, Deut Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3. Then Satan came too, and he used Psalms 91 on Jesus. Because he knows that the devil knows the word. That's why we have to sharpen ourselves up with the word of God. How can you use the word of God and the devil when you don't know it? You have to study the word of God. You got to make time every day to study this word. Because that's what the enemy gonna, gonna run from. When you use the word of God, he's gonna run. He's gonna flee. I'm not saying he's gonna stay away because he's gonna come back and try you again. But if you don't know the word of God, he ain't listening to you. He tempted Jesus. He tried to get Jesus to kill himself. And Jesus answered in the Old Testament, Don't tempt the Lord your God. It is written, Don't tempt the Lord your God. The devil even tried to get the Lord to bow down and worship him. And Jesus said, it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord and him only shalt, shalt thou serve. That's Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 13. We have to use the word of God to apply to any situation. I'm not just talking about when the devil tempt you. In life circumstance, you got an issue with, 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 with bills. You got to say Philippians 490, and my God shall supply all your needs. According to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You're sick in your body. You got you to gotta pray the word over. The, what, God, what does God say in his word? Healing is a children's bread. You have to use the word of God. Not just, not just your word because it, nothing going to happen. I'm telling you. The word of God is powerful. And a lot of us, we take it for granted. But you got to know the word. You got, and I'm not saying you got to know the whole Bible. I don't even know the whole Bible. I mean, I've been saved since, since two, you know, 2010. And I'm here to tell you. Excuse me, since 2000. That's 21 years. I don't know the whole Bible. I read the whole Bible in a year. You know they have that read the Bible in a whole year? I did that. That was last year. But for the, all these years I've been saved. I never knew the whole Bible. I, you know what, you know what the Lord told me? He told me to read specific scriptures and then he would say, Hey, I need you to study this. And then when I was going through anything, he would lead me to specific scriptures to apply to my situation. But I never knew the whole Bible. 
I never went to no seminary school. I mean, I took Bible classes, but I never went to no seminary school. I'm here to tell you, don't count yourself short. You don't have to know the whole Bible. Just, you know, study. The Bible, the word tell us, study to show ourselves approved unto God. A woman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Study the word. Every day you got to take time to study the word. Apply the situation to your life. Find the word in there that applies to your situation. Speak the word over your situation. Whatever it is, if you got having family issues, speak the word of God over your family. The Lord said he will save my household. Come on, the Lord wants you to be at peace. You don't have no peace in your household. The Lord wants you to be at peace. Find the, sp the scripture about peace. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. That's Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. There's scriptures in there to apply to your situation. But you got to use it. And you got to believe in it. Stand on it. Because God's going to back up his word. When you use the word, God's going to back up his word. He's, he's a doer of his word. He's not just a hearer. He's not going to hear you struggling and saying the word, his word, and not going to do nothing. He's going to back it up. So Ezekiel saw these bones and they were very dry. So the Lord asked him, son of man, can these bones live? And the outcome of that situation with the bones depends on the answer to the question. Ezekiel said, in the natural, his answer to the Lord was, Lord, you know. Because in the prophet's eyes, looking at these bones in the natural, they didn't have no hope. They look hopeless from the outward appearance. But when Ezekiel spoke to the bones, they came back alive. That's why you can't keep looking at things in the natural. Else you always see the negative. And I'm not saying something that things are not, don't look good. Yes, in the nat like with this coronavirus, I bring that up. It don't look good. So it looked like if in, in the eyes of people that would never go away. You know, certain things going on, like man, this this is not going. This don't look like it's going to change. Like, would this virus ever go away? You know, I want to live my life a normal. Things ain't going to be normal again. You think I want to be every minute wearing a mask or go outside? No, I don't want to do it. But it's to protect me and to protect other people. So things, sometimes things in the natural look like it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna change. That spouse and that person out of relationship you're dealing with look like it ain't gonna change. Don't look like them children and them grandchildren gonna ever change. But you can't look at things all the time in the natural. You have to see things from a spiritual perspective. See, that's what God allowed Ezekiel to do. Look at things in the spiritual perspective. Yes, these bones are very dry. They look like they don't have no hope. They look like nothing can happen and nothing ain't going to change. But take your eyes off of the natural. See in the spirit. And that's what I was talking about from the beginning. You got to allow God to show you things in the spirit realm. You have to look at things and see. When you look at things from a spiritual perspective, you're going to see things on people differently. I'm telling you, them children and people cutting up, look at it in a spiritual perspective and say, you know what? These little kids, like some of my seven-year-old, I said, this girl is getting on my nerves. I said, really? My seven-year-old daughter? Oh, my God. Something she be cutting up. I said, this girl is getting on my nerves. But you know what? God always show me as in the spiritual. But that's my prophet. She might be your daughter. You might have given birth to her. That's my child. That's my prophet. So you can't speak and say things the way she's acting. You got to say something different. You got to say, what, the, the, what, what does the word say about our children? They're fearfully and wonderfully made. Our children are mighty on the earth. They're going to do great exploits. You got to speak that over the kids when they're cutting up. Or whatever the situation, you got to speak the word. You got to get out of the natural and see things in the spiritual too. And I know something kind of hard. Like, you know, especially you give birth to kids and they're like, come on now, y'all know better. I, I didn't teach you all that. You know better. I teach you the right thing. And you know they're all over the place and, and you know, getting themselves in trouble and stuff. But still, no matter where they are, 
you still got to speak positive. See things in, in, in a spiritual sense because you know what? God is able to change things and people, no matter how bad it looks. In our eyes, no matter how it looks, he's able to turn things around if we use the word of God properly and believe it. So see, God don't see like we see. He knows what would happen to the bones with his word. He know what's going to happen to the dry bones if the word is applied to it. And when we apply his word to our lives and situations, it's going to change. And, you know, sometimes they say, but man, I prayed and I prayed and this thing just keep getting worse. Don't stop praying. Don't stop decreeing and declaring what, the God, what God say. Because it's going to change. And sometimes it take a hard, a hard way for some, especially when it's people. Sometimes it take the hard way for people to change. But don't stop speaking the word over them. Don't stop speaking the word over your situation. So here we come to point two, God's instructions. He told him to, he told Ezekiel to prophesy. And sometimes when God tells us to do something, it, 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 it don't look like it makes no sense at all. To some people and to us, it look like it's crazy. But you know what? That's when we got to obey the word of God. It's like, for example, he told Joshua, walk around the wall. I believe it was Joshua chapter six or Joshua chapter seven. He told him to walk around the wall. It's a Jericho. Seven times, don't say nothing. You can walk around here for six days, don't say nothing. And then on the seventh day, you're going to shout and the wall's going to come down. That didn't make no sense. I can imagine if I was back there in the days like, walk around the wall and don't say nothing. What do you mean? You know, I can imagine these people burning. They want to talk. They want to say something. You know, something that God would tell you, somebody, you know, somebody acting up and, and, and treating you wrong, and God may say, don't tell him nothing. You don't say nothing. I got it. And, and it's hard for us as people to, to keep our mouth shut. But the Bible tells, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 said there's a time to speak and a time when not to speak. So sometimes God may tell you, shut your mouth. I got it. Don't say nothing. You know, they, they might be cussing you out. They might be saying bad things to you about you. Don't say nothing. Act like you don't hear. And sometimes words hurt. But God might say, don't say nothing. I don't want you to tell him nothing. Just leave it alone. And that's when we need to obey God. Because you know the battle is not ours, it's God. And you have to remember this. When you're a child of God, people, not, they're not just coming up against you. They're coming up, coming up against the God that's in you. And they're going to have to answer to God for that. Where, wherever it is, in your home, on the job. They're coming up against God, the God in you. God going to fight your battles. And you always remember that. I know sometimes it hurt, you know, especially when it's family members and people say, you know, they say things about you that hurt. I know it's hard. But sometimes God, may, but how could God fight our battles if we want to fight it too? You know, something he's going to say, okay, I'm going to back away. You want to do this yourself? Go ahead. I'm telling you. When God gets revenge, God says, vengeance, it's mine. When God gets vengeance, he knows how to do it. It's done the best way. Now, we try to get the vengeance on people. You know what they're going to do? It, it, it sometimes it's going to get us in trouble. But I'm telling you, when God gets vengeance, he knows how to do it. He knows exactly how to get people back. So, you know, sometimes when God tell you to do something, it don't make no sense. Like, tell you, you know, walk around, for example, walk around your neighborhood. Walk around your neighborhood a couple times. Or, you know, it's a specific house or, or apartment he wants you to live in. He tell you, walk around it, claim it. Walk around a few times and claim it. Or pour, pour some oil outside somewhere. Anoint your doors. You know, anoint your doors. You know, like he told the people back in the Bible, anoint your doors. The deaf angel was coming in the land. That look, that might have looked foolish. I'm telling you, I still do that now. I still get oil and anoint my doors. I don't care who's looking. Because sometimes the Lord would tell me, go anoint your door. And I had to do it because I don't know what the enemy planning. I don't know. And something God would just say things to, te to test our obedience. He know whether we're going to listen to him or not. But see, something we don't know. We tell ourselves, God, I I'll obey you. I'll do whatever you say. 
Sometimes God tell you get up and get up early in the morning and pray. You, this flesh, this body don't want to get up. I'm tired. So something when he tells us something, it's for a reason. You know, he tell you certain things. And now anoint outside. Anoint your doors. Go in your children's room when they're not there. Anoint their room. Pray over their room. Pray over the, the bed, the, the pillow. Anoint this stuff. He can tell you, tell you stuff like that. And he's like, it don't make no sense. But see, you don't know when you're praying and you're anointing your children, you're protecting them from, from danger. You might be doing something, you know, in the, in the natural, they don't look like it makes no sense. But in the spirit realm, there's a reason because God knows what's coming down the road. God knows what's about to happen. And by you obeying and listening to him and doing something that don't make no sense or seem foolish. That's why he chooses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And by you doing that, it may look crazy. But when you obey God, you see the results of obeying him. May not happen right now, see the results right away. But eventually you see the results of your obedience. So here's another point. There's life in the word. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 7 through 10. When Ezekiel prophesied, something happened. The bones, come on, the Lord told him. Let's see verse 4. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, Oh, you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Come on, Ezekiel is speaking to bones. And that's why I say sometimes when God tells us to do something, it don't make sense. How can the bones hear? But you got to remember that God, when you apply the word of God, things are going to happen. You can speak to the winds. You can speak to the tornado. You can speak to the storm. That thing got to listen. You speak to it in the name of Jesus, it got to listen. Said there's some, there's some testimonies where tornadoes were coming to people's homes in, in their town and they spoke the word of God and the thing left. It's on, it's on, it's on, it's on YouTube. These things is real. The word of God is real. There's power in the word of God. So verse five, thus says the Lord God unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I'm the Lord. So this is a process that was going to take place when Ezekiel spoke. And it's just like when, when God created Man from the dust of the ground, he formed man. That's Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. He formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed the breath of life into him. Then man became a living soul. It's the same situation here. But when Ezekiel obeyed God and prophesied, he heard a noise. The bones moved and everything fell into place. When he prophesied, he prophesied from the inside out and the bones all rattled together. Come on. Forming skeletons. They have flesh and muscles grew on them. Forming complete human bodies. But guess what? They still wasn't alive because there was no divine breath in them. The Bible tells us that Proverbs 18, 21 says, Death and life and the power of the tongue. They that love it will eat its fruit. So when Ezekiel prophesied to those dry bones, the bones came together. The hand bone connected to the other hand bone. Everything fell into place. The, the, the hand bone didn't connect to the foot bone. Come on. The rib didn't connect to the feet, but everything fell into place as God originally created it. That's the God we serve. What a mighty powerful God. That when things don't look like it's going to happen, when it th look, things look like there's no hope, when you speak the word of God, you're going to see things change. You're going to see the manifestation. Come on. He says, I'm going to lay sinews upon you. Sinews is a piece of tough, fibrous tissue, uniting muscle to bone or bone to bone, a tendon or ligament. 
The sinews is the parts of a structure, system, or thing that give it strength or bind it together. We're talking about the sinews in our own bodies. The flesh is the soft substance consistent of muscle and fat that is found between the skin and bones of an animal or a human. You know sometimes that when you get a bad cut or a deep cut or a person get third degree bones, you can see all the way down in the flesh. That's the flesh. That's what hap came together when, when, when Ezekiel prophesied. Now, for let me give you an example. A few months ago, my daughter got her hand stuck in a treadmill. And some of her fingers got burned so bad. The three, the three fingers here in the middle. They got burned so bad on the inside that you can see all the way down to her flesh. And, it's, you know, you can smell the pus and all that. Not to be so graphic, but I'm trying to show you how it went. It burned all the way down. She got her fingers stuck in the treadmill. And, you know, the treadmill was on and burned three of her fingers. And it was so bad. It was so bad. I, you know, she wasn't with me. And so I freaked out when I saw her. I, I'm like, oh, my God, what in the world happened? You know, but it was so bad. But, you know, thank God it healed up. I had to put some, I took her to the doctor. They gave me some ointment. But, you know, the doctor even said, oh, my God, what happened? You can see your flesh. It was so bad. But I'm telling you, God healed her. So the sinews and the flesh, he said in verse 6, he's going to cause sinews to come upon you. I'm a, and, and I will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin. This is us. Like, you know, our skin and everything. The skin is a thin layer of tissue forming the natural outer covering of the body of a personal animal. This is your skin. Remember, when Ezekiel prophesied to those dry bones, they didn't have no skin or nothing on them. I want you to think about a skeleton with nothing, just, just dry bone. Skin is the lower, the, the body's largest organ, which is perhaps why it shouldn't come as a surprise that your baby's epidermis, which is the skin, starts to emerge early between weeks five and eight of pregnancy. At this point, it consists of two layers, basis, basal cells, the inner layer of cells and peridum cells, the outer layer. So this is an example of the skin. I, you know, I got these meanings to show you how deep this thing was. To show you how bad this, situa this situation looked with these bones. But look at what happened. Look at what happened. When he prophesied, bones came together. But something was missing. The substance that gave it life was missing. He said there was a noise. There was a shaking. And the bones came together. That's verse 7. Bone to his bone. He says, and when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them. And the skin covered them above. But there was no breath in them. The breath is the ruach. The Hebrew word. For breath is Ruach. And that's what was missing. And so. It's like when God formed man from the dust of the ground. Then breathed into him the breath of life. The Ruach. Then man became a living soul. Without the Ruach. Without this breath. You're dead. And that's why. I know, I know a lot of you guys know. But when you see a dead person. And they're not moving. And they're not saying nothing. They're just dead. That body is because the Ruach. The breath. Of God is gone. So the Hebrew word ruach means wind, breath, or spirit. The corresponding Greek word is pneuma. Both words are commonly used in passages referring to the Holy Spirit. So if you look at this, then said God. Verse 9, then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and said to the wind, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slains that they may live. And this is what Ezekiel did. So I prophesied, verse 10, as, as, as he commanded me, and the breath came on, into them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. We're talking about 
something. This is an amazing thing that God left in the Bible for us to see. And you know that is a lot more things that happened when Jesus was on the earth and when God, you know, you know, made the Bible. He used man to make the Bible. It's a lot, a lot more things happen, but it's not in the 66 books of the Bible because it's so much. But God leave a lot of things here for us. Things that he wants us to know so that we can learn and we can understand. He said, so I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them. This is what happens when you prophesy and you speak the word of God over your life and your situation. Something happened. And sometimes in the natural, you may not see a change in the natural right away, but I'm telling you, when you speak that word out there and it goes into the atmosphere, things start to change. Things start to shift. Because when he called for the breath, he called for the wind. The wind came. And let me give you an example. Israel, like in Acts 2, in the day of Pentecost, they were all in one place. And there came a sound from heaven, like a rushing mighty wind. That was the Ruach. That was the breath of God. The Holy Spirit came. And clothing tongues of fire sat on their head. And they all spoke with tongues as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. And that was the Ruach. That was the breath. Come on, the Holy Spirit came. And but when Ezekiel prophesied, breath came into them. When you prophesy, things are going to happen. Don't count yourself out. And they live. See, they needed that breath. That's why I said peace. People are walking around here like they're walking dead in the natural. They got a body and they're walking around. But in the spiritual, they're dead. On the inside, they're dead. They don't have no spiritual life. In the natural, they have life. Because yes, God made them and they're alive and they're walking around and going to work and whatever. But in, in, in the spiritual, they don't have no life because they don't have the spirit of God living in them. And you know what? When you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, the spirit of God comes to live in you. He comes to live in you and he starts to do a work. Come on. You need the Holy Ghost to live in this life. The Bible says, he that does not have the Son of God does not have life. You want to have like the Bible. Jesus said in John 10, 10, I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. If you want to have an abundant life, come on, you need to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because if you, as, apart from, from Jesus, this is just, you know, material things. You're just like a walking dead person. But I'm here to tell you, when you accept Christ, the Holy Spirit, the wind of God, the Ruach, God himself, the Spirit comes to live in you. And he changes you from the inside out. And so God, in, in, this, in these, first, these verses from 1 to 10, it was really referring to the nation of Israel. God was showing Ezekiel because the nation have, of Israel had went away into captivity. And this is when Ezekiel was in captivity and the Lord revealed and showed him what's going to happen to the nation of Israel. God explains that these are the bones of the house of Israel. That's down in verse 11. Then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore, prophesy and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves and shall put my spirit in you and you shall live and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, says the Lord. Amen. So God explained, this is the house of Israel. The bones, the vision that the Lord gave Ezekiel, he was showing them the state of Israel. Because they had went into captivity and it was like there was no hope for them. You know, the nation, they, they, they didn't exist anymore as a nation. 
It was thousands of years that they had, you know, they had, but look at what God did. In 1948, Israel became a nation again and God brought them back into their land. As he said in here in these verses, I will open your graves and I'm going to bring you out and put you back into your land. That's what God did. In 1948, Israel became a nation again. Back in Jerusalem. Come on, tell me how God came. Come on, God is awesome. These Jews were scattered all over. Like I was in New York, used to live in New York before, and you can see them, the Hasidic Jews. They, they, they were all over New York. They're all over the, the world. But God brought them back into their land, and they became a nation again. And eventually, he going to pour his spirit upon them. Come on. In the great tribulation, eventually, 144,000 Jews are going to be sealed with, with the seal of God. And they're going to go around preaching the word. You know, and eventually Israel, the nation, going to get saved. They're going to come to know Jesus Christ as the Messiah. This part hasn't come yet. But eventually it will. Because the Lord gave Ezekiel a vision showing, showing what was going to happen in the future. So sometimes when God gives us vision, he shows us what's going to happen in the future. He shows us, he can show us things now. Or he can show us what's going to happen in the future. But this is an amazing thing because they were in captivity for thousands of years. And look what God, you know, look at what God did. They had lost, they had lost their land. But look at what God did. Thousand years later, thousands of years later. Look at God. It says the hope for these, the, their faith. It was like they had no hope. The people believe that the, the nation of Israel believe that their faith is sealed and that there will be no restoration of their kingdom and their land. But there will. And this is the meaning of the dry bones coming to life. God restored them back to their land. The things that are impossible with men are possible with God. How can something that's dry and have no life here because God gives life to the dead and call those things that be that be not as though they were. That's Romans 4, 17. So the things, the situations that seems dead in your life, you need to speak to it. Speak the word of God. Don't fuss and worry and be complaining and murmuring. You know, this, this, when is, this situation going to never change? When is these kids going to stop acting? Or when are they going to listen to me? I'm getting tired of them not listen. Speak the word of God. Speak God's word. Your relationship is dry? Speak to it. If you're having financial issues, any financial issues, speak. If you're sick in your body, speak the word of God. You got a doctor's report that don't look good? Speak the word of God. Decree and declare God's word over your situation and you'll see the results. Things are going to change. So this is a, was the situation with the word today, Ezekiel 37 with the dry bones. Representing the nation of Israel and what God, with the state that they were in and what God was going to do eventually. But I'm here to tell you, no matter what your situation, what is your dry bones? You got some dry bones? Speak to the dry bones. Your finances is, you know, you don't, you don't know how you're going to pay bills, how you're going to pay rent. Speak to that. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I've been young and now I'm old and I've never seen a righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. If you are righteous, you don't have to beg nobody. You go to God. Say, God, you said you would supply my needs. You said, I don't have to worry, Matthew, you know, this is in the word. I believe it's in Matthew 6 from verse 25. You don't have to worry about what you're going to eat, drink, or wear. That's what the word said. You got to speak the word of God over your lives, amen? And you're going to see things change, amen? God is able. God hears everything. God knows everything. He's a, he's a real God, and he loves us. He loves his children. Amen? So you shall decree a thing, and it will be established. Decree God's word. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in. Amen? Just want to remind you, you know, to seek the Lord. If you don't have that relationship with Jesus Christ, 
Seek the Lord today. Today is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. It's the ABCs of salvation. Admit that you're a sinner. Believe in who Jesus Christ is. The belief got to come from the heart. Believe that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. He died for you. And he rose from the dead. And confess him as your Lord and Savior. Because Romans 10 verse 9 and 10 say, If you confess with your mouth, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart. God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. For with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in. Love you guys. Stay encouraged and stay in the faith. God bless you.